Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is a get ready with me and also a Q&A. I asked you guys for questions on my community page and also over on Instagram and you guys asked me a bunch of questions which I'm super thankful for because it gave me lots of things to talk about. In this video, we're going to cry and we're going to laugh together. We got a little personal with some of the questions and so there were a few tears. Um, sorry, <laughs> but I was just trying to give you my most truthful, honest answer on everything. With that said, I truly hope that you guys enjoy it. I hope you give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and let's go ahead and get into it. I'm about to get started getting ready and answering all of the questions that you guys left me. Everybody who left me questions on Instagram or on my community page, thank you so much for the questions because you've given me things to talk about and I'm super appreciative of it. I picked out a bunch of makeup from my collection that is not the things you usually see me grab for just to change things around a little bit i grab things that i just haven't reached for in a long time like my hula bronzer my anastasia foundation and a bunch of other products like that i also grabbed which i'm super excited to play with the mercury retrograde palette this was my most favorite palette that launched last year and i haven't reached for it in a little while and i'm super excited to dig in I have six looks on my channel that I'll link down below with this palette right here so I'm not going to be doing a close-up tutorial because this video is more about getting ready and me answering your questions but I have lots of looks with this palette that you can search through my channel for and again I'll link them down below so don't get upset that I'm not going to put the camera super close to my eyeball okay I will be telling you what colors I'm using and the first one I'm going to be re reaching for is momentum and then I'm going to do crash yeah <laughs> yeah, so the first question I always get is where I'm from and where my accent comes from and I am Cuba I was born and raised there I moved from Havana to Miami when I was 15 years old which is now 14 years ago that's crazy um, <laughs> I did not know a word in English when I moved here and I thankfully have two little brothers that always had on like Disney Channel or Nickelodeon and things like that and at that house we always had the English subtitles underneath and so I watched a lot of like kid TV back then and I would read everything as I was hearing it and so whatever I couldn't understand from hearing the words kind of like were spelled similarly like with a different ending and things like that and so kind of by association or having words that like spell out similarly at the beginning of or things like that I picked up English quite quickly I moved to Miami in September and when I first started school they did and um, I think they were called like ESOL tests and they placed me in like level one English because I literally didn't know anything like just greetings is all I knew and then two months later I asked my teacher to do the test on me again because I felt like I could you know um, improve a lot and they did the quick test on me again and I qualified for level three there's five levels total so it was quite an advancement and when you go from level two to level three which in my case I went from level one to level three they change all of your classes to English classes because when you're in the first two levels you don't know enough to be in like English history classes or math or um, chemistry or anything like everything was taught to me in Spanish at the school because I didn't know enough English to like be able to learn any content in English if that makes sense but when you're placed in level three they change all of your classes to English classes so I was doing level three English classes but then my history physics, chemistry classes, all of that switched to English when the second semester of my junior year started. I hope that made sense, I feel like it was a little complicated. But then eventually by the time I finished high school I had already exited the ESOL program because I kept practicing at home and I also had the advantage of like I would speak to my little brothers in English and if I didn't say something right it was okay because they were my little brothers so I felt very comfortable in practicing. And so by the time I finished high school um, less than two years later I was able to just go straight to college and I felt comfortable enough not that I was an expert um, speaking writing and reading in English and so then I started the honors college in Miami-Dade which was awesome because 
it was a scholarship thing and I didn't have to pay um, tuition then Sharon asked your family's immigration story from Cuba and what you miss about it so not my whole family is here my mom's side of the family still lives in Cuba um, so I speak to her all the time on the phone and I haven't gone back to visit in a couple of years now so obviously what I miss most is my mom besides my mom and like the rest of my family on my mom's side I miss the beach a lot because the beaches in Cuba are paradise they are so beautiful the water is turquoise it's so clear the um, sand is white it's super thin it is like just paradise I feel like the beach in Cuba Varadero Beach um, specifically is like my happy place every time I go back to visit I cannot not go there you know so definitely the beach is what I miss besides my family because it is just again paradise uh, if you guys want to look it up on google Varadero is spelled v-a-r-a-d-e-r-o so type Varadero beach and you'll see the pictures that beach is like an hour and a half two hours from Havana where I lived and I would go there every summer and it's just again my happy place I don't have one bad memory of going there and then as far as how I got here or like my family's immigration story it is quite simple I think other countries especially countries like Cuba they have a visa lottery with the United States where like you can apply for the lottery and if your letter gets picked out the United States will give you a visa to like move here basically my mom and my dad had split when I was very little like maybe one or two years old I don't actually know the date and my dad was dating somebody else and that's my um, little brother's mom and her family won a visa lottery and so my dad had the opportunity to come here with them he left me in Cuba with my mom and like my grandparents and then my grandparents on my dad's side also lived in Cuba at the time and so I grew up kind of between like my um, grandma and grandpa's house my grandma and grandpa like my dad's mom and dad and uh, my mom um, so he came over when I was like I think maybe three years old and then I would see him every summer he would like go back to see me um, once a year for like two weeks we would we would usually go to Varadero then um, and um, I that was always like my favorite part of the year where I got to see my dad And then eventually when I turned 13, I believe it was, I told my dad that I wanted to come over here with him because I was going to school in Cuba and like in Cuba, basically like people who go to school and go to university and graduate and like just like go on to like work for the government because everything in Cuba is government owned they make no money or they could be making the same amount of money as someone who did absolutely nothing in fact people who have private businesses or that just like sell stuff that they get sent from outside of Cuba or whatever make so much more money than anyone who like went to school because that system is just extremely effed up so I guess when I kind of got a grasp on that reality at like 13 ish I told my dad I wanted to move over here like we talked about it with my mom my mom understood that that was what was best for me as well and my dad put in the papers for me to come over obviously all of that paperwork takes time so I ended up coming when I was 15 years old and then I already told you the rest of that story so that's kind of like my family's immigration story I could say a few years after that when I was already finishing college my grandparents on my dad's side moved over here my grandpa passed away unfortunately last year but my grandma still lives there with my dad in miami i talk to her on the phone almost every day she is my everything i love her so much this was a very bad idea to pick today to do this video because it's that time of the month so i already could cry about anything and then talking about like family it's like hard <laughs> 
I have a question from Instagram that says where are you from originally which I already explained and then she said and how did you get introduced to makeup thanks so my first makeup experience ever was my um, quinceañera pictures like in Cuba like in a lot of Hispanic countries we celebrate your quinceañera which is like when you turn 15 and in my culture it's like that's the first time you can like shave your legs or like put makeup on and things like that so it's like an exciting moment I was definitely shaving my legs since I turned 13 because I am hairy but like things but things like makeup you're not allowed to wear makeup until you turn 15 so I don't like being the center of attention and so I did not have a quinceañera party I'm not into like parties for myself <laughs> so what I did do for my quinceañera was like the photo shoot part so they did my makeup and I went to a studio and they took a bunch of pictures and like that was super fun and that was the first time that I ever had like a full face of makeup on and I immediately fell in love with it now there's not a lot of makeup in Cuba because it's so hot it would all melt off of your face immediately so in Cuba what people do is like a little eyeliner a little mascara maybe brows and lips but they're not hugely into putting foundations on or anything like that because the climate is so hot and you spend so much time outside that it's not functional to wear a lot of makeup I could say and then you would only put like a foundation or a concealer on or anything like that if you were going out I'm going to grab a little bit of off balance right here so that experience at 15 was definitely like when I fell in love with like what makeup does for you like the way it makes you feel but because I lived in Cuba for a few more months at the time I didn't necessarily start like practicing or wearing or like whatever you know when I came over here I would always get in my um, stepmom's little makeup bag and like play with her products and like put them on eventually I started getting my own drugstore things and I fell in love with like makeup videos on YouTube and I started practicing eventually I got influenced to get my naked palette and get some brushes etc so the more I watched videos and bought products and started playing the more I fell in love with it and until I decided that that was like what I wanted to do uh, besides the fact that I already had two bachelor's degrees you know um, it definitely is what makes me happy and relaxes me and just it's like a stress reliever for me and I love to do makeup on people too because I love the way that makeup makes them feel when they see themselves transformed and they just like are feeling themselves and wanting to take pictures and all of that it's an amazing feeling uh, for me to see what makeup does to other people as well if that makes sense I'm putting nebula on because why not and I'm just using my finger it is such a beautiful color and I'm going to do some vortex here to deepen things up a little more okay I'm back I finished blending the crease area it looks a little patchy but I think it's because I was emotional earlier and I like messed up my eyeshadow I think from where you from where you are you can't really see it but it, it's a little patchy it's fine <laughs> all right so thank you so much actually for asking these questions so she said what is your love language I did not even know this was a thing but when I went to my Charlotte Tilbury training like three weeks ago we took the love language test if you guys google it to say like love language quiz or something like that and it'll like pop up and so I did the love language quiz quiz and my love language is um, acts of service I think it was um, I basically just like people to do things for me <laughs> that's how I like to be shown that people love me and I think a lot of it comes from like when I was taking the quiz I was thinking of all of the things my husband does for me and so a lot of the answers were just me thinking about how much I love everything that my husband does for me <laughs> I'm using the Makeup Forever Hydrating Primer, by the way. I'm just putting it all over my face. So, Acts of Service is my love language. Cece's favorite toys usually are balls. Like, she loves to grab balls. And it's weird because she, she won't give them to you to, like, throw them and, like, go catch them or anything. She just likes playing with them, showing you that she has them, and then she wants you to, like, come grab it from her. Um, that's the way she plays with um, balls <laughs> She she's like here's what I have you come get it if you want it 
when did we get her? We got CC like three and a half years ago almost. I think in May she turns four. And we got her when she was a few months old. And she's just so perfect. She is like the best dog ever. She is so caring and she loves to cuddle. She's amazing. How did you and your husband meet? Let me do my makeup because I, I'm forgetting that I'm doing makeup on here. I'm using the Anastasia foundation, which I haven't used in a while because I don't know why. I didn't love this foundation when I first reviewed it, but I changed my mind afterwards. It's actually good. I just like it a lot better with a brush than a sponge for sure. My husband and I met when we were kids, basically. In Cuba, like, you grow up knowing everybody who lives around you like you know all of your neighbors and you go to um, school with the kids from your neighborhood and he didn't live in my neighborhood but i would sometimes go and um, stay the weekend at my cousin's house and he was my cousin's neighbor and he went to school with her so we would sometimes like play outside when i went to stay at my cousin's house and i always had like a crush on him and whatnot and then after I had moved here, the first time I went to Cuba to like visit my mom and stuff, he saw me at my cousin's house and he called me a few days later inviting me out. And I thought, because I always had a crush on him and like my cousin and her boyfriend at the time knew that, I thought they were like prank calling me and I was so rude to him on the phone because I thought it was someone pretending to be him. <laughs> And then I called my cousin, I'm like, haha, like, good joke, you guys are funny. And then she was like, no, no, like, he actually came and asked for your number, like, two days ago. But, like, to me, the whole thing was very weird, because I'm like, I didn't live in Cuba anymore, so why would he be calling me to invite me out? It made no sense. So, anyways, because, again, I always had a crush on him, I told my cousin to, like, ask him to call me again and i apologized and i said hey like i really didn't think it was you calling but yeah sure let's go out and so i went to my cousin's house the next weekend to stay over so we could like hang out and whatnot and um the rest is history if you guys ever want to hear the full story there is a lot more to it but yeah i will tell you one more thing though i later found out that when he called me he because he like I, he only would see me when I went to my cousin's house. He, he didn't know that I didn't live in Cuba anymore. He just thought he hadn't seen me for a long time. He saw me that weekend and he decided to like give me a call to hang out. But then by the time that I agreed to go out and I actually went over to like hang out with him, his mom had told him that I didn't live in Cuba anymore and he like almost canceled on me because he had found out that I didn't live in Cuba anymore. Anyways, there's a lot, a lot, a lot more to that story. And that might be a story for a different video. Then Ashley also asked what my favorite food is, favorite restaurant, and favorite part about living in Georgia. My favorite food... I don't know, I have a lot of different favorites. I would say my favorite restaurant is the Cheesecake Factory. I love going to the Cheesecake Factory. I love how... I was gonna say I love how like they have a huge variety in their menu yet I always get almost the same thing my favorite food from the Cheesecake Factory is the chicken Bellagio it is so good it's like a pesto sauce on pasta and then they have like breaded chicken on top and prosciutto on top of the chicken it is so freaking delicious once we get over this world crisis and restaurants open back up or if you just want to get takeout from the Cheesecake Factory right now, order the Chicken Bellagio. The serving is definitely two serving sizes. I always come home with half and it is so freaking delicious. I am obsessed with it. I almost always get that when I go and then I feel very guilty about it, but it is just so good. Um, my favorite food outside of the food at my favorite restaurant my husband likes cooking a lot and he sometimes makes some delicious meals so I definitely love a lot of what he makes and then I think somebody else asked about comfort food so when I get to that question I'll answer that and then my favorite part about living in Georgia there is so much I love about living in Georgia I love that I get to see the four seasons because growing up in Cuba it is always summer always hot <laughs> so I love that I get to experience fall and spring here and winter and all of that I don't think I like big cities or to be in like 
super crowded areas so I definitely love living here in Alpharetta I also love that I have everything I need in my neighborhood so I never have to be in a lot of traffic or go super far away for anything Tania asks how long have you been doing makeup have you hit a creative wall favorite go-to makeup favorite brand and what's been keeping me sane during this time I forgot I was gonna use this let me put it on top Favorite makeup brands, I love um, Charlotte Tilbury, I love Anastasia, Huda, Urban Decay, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Colourpop, and then there's just different things I like from different brands as well, so I mean I like most brands, there's not a brand that I personally like dislike or anything, uh, like maybe I'm not super into like Revlon, I like Physicians Formula, I like e.l.f. I like Milani. So I'm going to use the No Concealer Concealer from Dr. Pericone because I've been wanting to try this one for a while and I don't think I did. I'm going to use a Dry Beauty Blender. Do not judge me. I don't want to get up right now. And it's just for my concealer so it's fine. And you know what? If you want to judge me, do because I'm judging myself right now. I've been doing makeup for five years, I would say, since the time I started like working at Sephora. Obviously on myself for a lot longer than that but um, like on other people five years also I feel like when I started working at Sephora I learned so much more so yeah I would say five years I would say that one of the most important things that's been keeping me sane during this time period is the fact that I get to sit here edit my videos upload them I've been uploading a lot more than usual because I've had a lot more time than usual and keeping myself doing something has kept me sane. I'm sure that if I didn't have my channel, I would be building some big puzzle, doing one of those little rhinestone things, anything like that. <laughs> Definitely the fact that I have this space and I get to do these videos um, has been keeping me sane and interacting with you guys in the comments keeps me sane. I love reading and responding to everything that you guys have to say. So that's one big thing for me. Melissa said, are there any trends you really miss or that you're relieved are gone? Love your channel and hope you're well. Melissa, I hope you're doing well as well. Trends that I miss or that I am relieved that they're gone. You know what? I am relieved that we are over the phase of baking everything at all times. I feel like most people are moving more so towards like dewy makeup because my dry skin could not keep up with the baking <laughs> so I've never like baked my whole face or anything like that but I feel like now that everybody's into more dewy skin like makeup I feel better about the fact that that's the type of makeup I like and that I can share with you guys if that makes sense so that's the one trend that I'm relieved is gone is the very matte looking faces and then anything I miss I'm using the e.l.f. setting powder underneath my eyes right now I don't think I miss any trends because if I did I would just keep doing them actually maybe like YouTube tags I feel like I haven't seen any tags on YouTube for a very long time and I like those and I would like to participate so YouTube tags maybe would be a trend that I miss somebody else asked what is the one makeup item that you can't live without what is your favorite comfort food if you had to choose a makeup brand to collaborate with which one would you choose so the one makeup item that I can't live without, I would probably say an eyebrow pencil. Filling in my eyebrows is the one thing that elevates my confidence, I think. Like when I fill in my eyebrows, I feel like myself. Uh, rather than when I have no makeup on and my eyebrows aren't filled, I think I look so ugly without my eyebrows on. Because my eyebrow shape is so different from the shape that I give myself and I think this is much more flattering. So definitely my eyebrow products are the one thing I don't think I could live without. Favorite comfort food? Okay, so like here in America I feel like comfort food for everybody is like either mac and cheese or hamburgers or like mashed potatoes, things like that. Growing up in Cuba you eat a lot of rice, so rice in and of itself is comfort food for me. And then my favorite comfort food is rice with fried eggs. I make myself rice with fried eggs so often my husband is sick of them. He is more of like a bread guy, he likes to eat sandwiches. I could eat rice forever. I could eat rice with fried eggs forever. And now that I've discovered some other condiments, I love to eat rice with fried eggs and sriracha sauce on top. It is so good. 
so so good and I know that like for a lot of people here fried eggs are something that you eat for breakfast we eat it for lunch or dinner or anytime just because like in Cuba you don't always have the luxury of having chicken fish or meat to serve in every meal so we replace a lot of our protein with eggs and so I think that's why fr um, white rice with fried eggs is such a comfort food uh, for me and for a lot of Cubans actually I think um, that is definitely our version of comfort food and it is so good I could have it any time of the day in fact I think that's what I had for dinner last night if I could choose any makeup brand to collaborate with which one would you choose I don't know if it's collaboration as in doing like sponsored videos or like me actually trying to like come up with a product I feel like a collaboration and like me trying to come up with a product with a brand is such a far away dream for me that I can't even think of what brand I would like to do that with definitely any of the favorite brands that I mentioned to you before would be an absolute dream come true I'm not saying some of your guys' names because you have like usernames and I don't know how to pronounce them so I apologize for that somebody else asked what's your favorite makeup brand your least favorite and one brand that's popular that you haven't tried but want to in 2020 my favorite makeup brand I think Charlotte Tilbury just because so many of their products are my favorite and I can basically use that brand for every step of the way and be so happy with the results so I think Charlotte is my favorite brand my least favorite I guess something that I don't own any of I think my least favorite brand would be Makeup Revolution. I'm sorry if you guys love them. I've never bought anything from them before and I know that they have really good products, but I think that their whole brand is based on the concept of duping things that other people came up with and they have such a huge brand base off of that. It's scary. <laughs> so I think that brand would probably be my least favorite. And one brand that is very popular that I haven't tried yet Bizart, I think it's called VZ Art. Their eyeshadows are super popular and I don't have them. So um, maybe I could buy some other stuff in the future. I, I'm definitely very curious. Brenda asks how many kids I want. I definitely want more dogs. I'm not sure about kids, but maybe one. And then Nora said, what's your inspiration to do the looks that you do, the palettes or the individual colors or the themes or names or whatever from the palettes you choose? Since I usually do looks sticking to like one specific palette, I should be doing my makeup right now. Since I usually pick out my looks based on like one specific palette, I think I just try to combine colors from that palette that I think go well together. So that's usually what inspires me is picking out different colors from that palette that I know I can like make work. Alright, so underneath my eyes I use Vortex with a little bit of Momentum and then in the inner corner I use Supermoon. So I definitely get inspired by the different colors within one palette. Whenever I do reach for more than just one palette it's because I know that there is like a transition shade I need or an inner corner shade I need or like just something specific. But I usually like to stay within the theme of the palette that I'm using basically. She also said, how long did it take you to be this great at doing makeup? Thank you. Um, I don't think I'm that great but I have been into makeup for a very long time so I've been practicing for a very long time I started doing makeup on other people five years ago maybe six or seven years ago on myself like doing like a full face of makeup type thing so it's been a while I've only had my channel for a little bit over three years and if you go back to some of my older videos I think I have improved a lot since then so I definitely learn new things constantly and apply them to my own routine I'm going to use my lash princess mascara because it applies so quickly <laughs> I love to use it when I want to save time and then she also was thanking me because I always respond to all of my comments um, and I love doing that that's definitely not something that I force myself to do it's something that I just simply like doing I like reading everything you have to say and if you took the time to write something the least I could do is take the time to respond you know if my channel continues to grow I'm sure there'll be a point at which I'm not going to be able to respond to every single comment but I'll definitely keep doing it for as long as I can I am back mascara on and I'm using this perpetrator 
eyeliner from Fenty in my waterline. Wendy asks, what's your favorite highlight? I think for sure like Becca highlighters have one of my favorite formulas, but I think my number one favorite highlighter is um, the Amrezy highlighter by Anastasia. It's amazing. I love that one. Not chunky, but still blinding. <laughs> Oh, I never answered, have you ever hit a creative wall? I don't think so, thankfully, yet. Um, just because I feel like new products come out all the time and I get inspired by the new makeup releases. I'm going to use my Hoola bronzer. I haven't used it in a very long time. Okay, so Susan asked, do you enjoy cooking or baking? Any faves? I don't enjoy baking because I don't know how to and I don't have like the mixers for it or anything. I'm sure if I did maybe I would. The only baking I aspire to ever do is I'm obsessed with Oreos but I don't like the filling in the Oreos. I know it's kind of weird because every time I say that everybody's like that's the best part. I don't like the filling. I just like the chocolate cookie. I want to learn how to make myself chocolate cookies because every time I eat Oreos I take all the filling out and I feel like I'm wasting Oreos, I'm wasting filling and I'm wasting money. So if I could learn how to make something similar to like the chocolate cookie from Oreos, I would be so happy. <laughs> but I don't bake. I do cook. I love making Cuban food. My husband usually does like the meat part, but I love making like black beans. It's my specialty. I think I make really good black beans, if I can say so myself. My friends, my husband, my brother-in-law, they all love my black beans. I can't lie and say that like cooking is a stress reliever for me or that I do it super often because I don't. Since I could live off of white rice and fried eggs um, and that takes like 10 minutes, I don't cook that often. <laughs> but whenever I wake up inspired, I definitely do really enjoy doing it. I just don't wake up inspired that often. Um, Giselle said, do you prefer makeup or skincare? Makeup is a stress reliever for me, so I enjoy the process of doing my makeup. But I also really love skincare. I love taking care of my skin, pampering myself, and all of that. So I see skincare as more of a necessity and makeup more as a luxury. So I would say I probably enjoy more doing makeup, but they go hand in hand, you know? I wouldn't be able to enjoy makeup if I didn't do skincare, because I think my skin would be very shitty if I didn't do skincare to like wash my makeup off and really clean my face and hydrate and all of that. So for me, they definitely go hand in hand, but doing makeup makes me feel more creative. She said, how many hairstyles slash colors have you tried in the past? I'm very boring when it comes to my hair because I only like to see myself with dark hair because my eyebrows are so dark. The lightest my hair's ever been is having a bunch of highlights on it, which I did when I was younger. Um, but I always prefer to see myself with dark hair. So I haven't tried a bunch of different hairstyles. She said, how do you see yourself in five years? New job, home, more dogs. Honestly, I would love to be able to support myself and my family in five years just with my YouTube channel. That would be a dream come true. I want YouTube to be my full-time job so bad. It is an absolute dream of mine. I love making videos and I love interacting with you and it is my absolute favorite thing in the world. So I definitely hope that in five years, I would be able to say this is my only job. New home, more dogs. I think a new home would come with more dogs because I live in a townhouse right now and I already want more dogs, but we don't have a big patio where they could like run free and like waste energy. So um, if I were to get a new home with a big patio, I would definitely get at least one more dog, maybe two. That would be amazing. She also said, what's the first thing you notice when someone's makeup is poorly done? Brows, cakey foundation. I think on blended eyeshadow would be the thing. On blended eyeshadow makes me want to grab a brush and be like, yeah, keep, keep talking, mm -hmm. yeah, what else did you have to say? Yeah, okay, all right, bye. <laughs> By the way, thank you so much, Giselle, for all your wonderful questions. She also said, which brands would you go for if money wasn't an issue and why? I would definitely have every single Pat McGrath palette because I love them. The packaging is amazing. They're visually stunning. But I still haven't bought one. 
and I so wish I had every single one she launches ever because I think that they are so absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful but they're so expensive <laughs> They're so, so expensive. Um, so I think definitely more Pat McGrath palettes in my life. Every single one of them, if possible, thank you. I'm going to use Luminoso from Milani. If you had the chance for a collab with a brand, which product would you create? I would create an eyeshadow palette, I think. And I haven't given much thought to like what shades I would choose but for instance it would have to have at least two colors to highlight your inner corner with it would have to have a few different levels of transition shades for different skin tones I would love it to have stunning shimmers and glitters so that everybody would be able to use it so I don't know what shades I would choose but I would love it to have specific things in it that would please everybody if that makes sense <laughs> I think eyeshadow is for sure one of the things that I'm the most passionate about, so that would be the way to go for me. And then she asked what my favorite makeup brand is. I don't know if I already answered this, but I think Charlotte Tilbury would be my number one brand right now. Uh, my friend Hannah said, what started your love for Harry Potter? <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I am obsessed with Harry Potter. I love it. I have read the books like three to four times. When I first ever watched a Harry Potter movie, I lived in Cuba, My, um, they would have this show every weekend where they would play a movie, I think it was like at 3 o'clock on Saturdays or something like that, and my mom was like, look, there's this new movie they're going to, um, they're going to play, and it's like about wizards, and it's a boy, and da da da, I think you would like it, so I sat there and I watched it and I absolutely loved it, and then I saw movies 2 and 3, and then I discovered that I could get my hands on the books because my mom had a friend I lived in Cuba at the time, so it was hard. You know, you couldn't buy $20 books in Cuba, that's crazy. So my mom's work friend would print the books out for his son. So I, since I had watched the first three movies, I started reading book number four because I could get my hands on it before the movie came out. After my mom's friend from work son finished reading his book, which he had printed out on a binder, he lent it to me. And I read the whole book and I was so in love with it. And then every time a new book would come out, I would wait for um, this boy to finish it. I, I don't even think I ever met him, <laughs> now that I think about it. But I would wait for him to finish it, lend me the binder, and I would read it. And then I think right before I moved here from Cuba in 2017, the last book had leaked online so I read it on the computer I read it like in the screen on the computer just like scrolling through the pages and all of this was in Spanish so then when I learned how to read English the first thing I wanted to do was reread the books in English and so I of course did that and what was the question what started my love for Harry Potter I don't know I guess I just love magic or the idea of magic so yeah the books are so well written too. If you guys have watched the movies and you're a fan, you have experienced nothing until you read the books. You need to read the books. Now that you have time with this quarantine, if you're looking for things to do, read the Harry Potter books. I 1000% recommend it. <laughs> By the way, I have this Stila highlighter that I want to use and then I want to put the little highlight glitter over top. I'm going to use my dry sponge for that. Beautimus, beautimus. Let me look for the questions that I haven't responded yet. I only have one set of questions left from Ina. Thank you so much for all of the questions you left me. <laughs> she said, what makes you regret starting your channel sometimes? I have never regretted starting my channel. I love it here. <laughs> what was the worst comment you got? I'm so thankful that I barely experienced negative comments on my channel to be honest with you. Um, one thing you would change about your channel, I wish I had started my channel sooner, that is the one thing I regret about my channel. Just because I wanted to do it for such a long time and I didn't because I didn't have the perfect conditions to start and I mean I still started it without the perfect conditions obviously but I wish I had committed to it sooner than I did. So that is the one thing that I regret. I wish I would have started sooner because I wanted to do it for a very long time before I ever actually started doing it, if that makes sense. The lipstick I used was the L'Oreal in 416 Create and this lipstick is just 
so freaking beautiful Ooh, i almost put brush cleaner on a setting spray that would have been bad i'm going to use my morphe spray and i think i'm done with my makeup let me just finish up the questions <laughs> um she also said what do you regret not knowing when you started your channel i just wish i would have been better at editing and i wish that the first year that i did it i would have put up more content i committed to doing one video a week for a year when i first started my channel and i definitely did do one video a week but i wish i would have done more you know what's your most used palette ever which one do you reach for the most i think my naked three palette maybe would be the most used ever or maybe the Huda Beauty New Nudes. See. She also asked, what's the product you regretted the most getting? I don't think there's a product I super regret getting because the products that I have regretted getting, I've just ended up returning. Like the Patrick Ta highlighters. I didn't like those at all. Thankfully, returning things that you hate is an option. If you had to choose one item of each makeup product, what would they be? Like one moisturizer, one foundation, one concealer. I think I'll just link a video down below where I did a full face of like favorite product. And if you guys are interested in that, you can see that. My favorite perfume at the moment. I'm honestly not even wearing perfume right now because I'm just at home every day. YSL Libre is definitely up there or the Chance Chanel Au Fresh. I love those. Your favorite shop for clothing? Nordstrom Rack, I think I would say. Because they have like nicer clothes for like not super expensive. What do you wish was sold in the USA directly from the store? I honestly don't shop that much for things other than makeup. So I don't think I have an answer to your question. Because I think most makeup brands, even if they're not based in the USA, ship to the USA. So... I don't know there is a couple more questions i wanted to include on here these were questions that came from my declutter video joanna said is all that makeup makeup that you purchase on your own or pr and then super lady who she has a channel here on youtube she asked how are you financing all this makeup lots of love my makeup collection for sure started growing when i started working at sephora i worked at sephora for four and a half years and when you work at Sephora, you get so much makeup given to you for free. Most of the foundations I have, I didn't purchase myself. I got them because whenever a new foundation would launch, the brand would want people who work at Sephora to experience it so they would know how to sell it to people. And so we would all get matched and get our color in our foundation. So for sure, most of my non-palette makeup most of my lipsticks, most of my foundations, primers, uh, most of my concealers, powders, um, all of those things are things that I received in gratis. I've received a couple of PR packages like the Ultra Eagle palettes or the Kosas cosmetic stuff I received in PR, not the concealer, I actually purchased that. So most of it came from when I worked at Sephora. I've gotten some Charlotte Tilbury gratis since I've been working at Charlotte Tilbury as well. And for instance, when I did my color magic video from Charlotte Tilbury a couple of weeks ago, the products that I used were testers that I borrowed from work and then I just took them back. So I didn't purchase every single item from that collection that came out. So that is where most of my makeup collection came from. The palettes, I've definitely bought most of them. I would say 90 to 95% of my palettes I purchased myself. A couple of my Anastasia palettes were gratis, but the rest of them I bought myself. All of those palettes I've bought. Um, except for two of the Anastasia ones and then the way I'm able to afford what I do buy which is mostly palettes <laughs> I'm able to afford it now because this channel is generating some revenue and, and so I do invest most of that revenue into making more content and buying more products to make content with so that is it for this video. Thank you so much to everybody who asked questions. I truly appreciate them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you're watching this video and you're still not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Also, if you guys wanna hit the notification bell, it'll notify you every time that I upload. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, please follow me on Instagram. The handle is at Patty C. Alonso, and you can participate in things like asking me questions for future Q&As, because I always ask 
both on Instagram and on my community page. I don't think the community page shows on everybody's feed. So I think Instagram is a safer way for you guys to see Q&As in the future and all of that. And so that is it. Thank you so much to everyone who asked me questions. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you come back for the next one. Bye!